Thank you all for joining us today for our prayer and praise opportunity online. I look forward to this time every week. It's a chance to connect together as church family. I think it's a great time to learn a little bit more about what God is doing in and through the lives of people around us. And it's so good to be able to take time to pray together and to praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to it, it's gonna be good. Good morning, as we gather together today, I'm thinking of us offering to the Lord a great crescendo of praise. Praise to our risen Savior, praise to our mighty King, the King of Kings, the one who conquered death. He is our victorious King. He's our resurrected King, our reigning King, and our returning King. And we just want to thank him for everything that he has done for us today. There's been some great things happening. Our awesome God is at work. And I wanted to share a couple of cool things that are happening out there. Did you know that our Grief Share program has been continuing once a week online? This is a program that reaches out to those who have lost loved ones to bring comfort and healing and mercy and compassion. And it's wonderful. This has been able to continue with four individuals and three leaders online. Also, did you know what happened on Good Friday at the Dunville Hospital? Subway sandwiches were delivered to the doctors and nurses, the healthcare providers, the maintenance staff and kitchen staff and dietitians. It was a wonderful, wonderful extension of God's love to show our appreciation and support. Did you know that our food hub is up and running well and already 85 individuals have been helped through this. Not 85 carloads, but 85 individuals. And this is a partnership with Open Arms Mission it is also uh, a way to connect in our community and um, show support. Um, and we are working with the firefighters, we're working with the Township of Wainfleet, school principals of our three local schools have been made aware of this, and they are recommending families that could be benefiting from this to come and, and um, have their needs met. There is even one little girl in our fellowship that's sewing little masks, protective masks for the volunteers that are serving at the church, distributing the food. So we're all pitching in and it's great. I also wanted to tell you, I'm very thankful today for our class and those that are willing to share. We're going to hear from Natalie McMillan and her and Colton are, have been on quite a journey. She's going to tell us about it. And Lily Gilmore is going to give us some insight into the things that are happening um, in her world. And um, also there's some that are learning Bible verses and I'm, I'm so pleased about that. Sierra is going to start us off today with a special verse that um, tells us that God is our savior and our hope. So we'll look to Sierra for her verse and then we'll hear from Natalie and Lily. Psalms 25 verses 4 and 5. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Hey everyone. So I have been asked to just share a bit about how God has been working in Colton and my life in this past little bit. It has definitely been a crazy situation, lots of negative stuff going on right now, but God is still always at work and that has been very much the case in our life. Um, so just to share a little bit of background, Colton and I have been facing some um, difficult challenges on top of everything going on with COVID-19. Um, as you may have seen on the prayer line in early March, we were given some very, very disheartening news about our baby. Um, his brain is not developing as it should be, and the doctors do not have very high hopes um, for his survival after birth. Um, which, and then with everything really hitting the fan with COVID-19, only a couple weeks after getting that news, it has made for a very 
stressful and overwhelming and scary situation for everybody and especially for us with this situation as well but God has really really shown up for us and he has come through in some really amazing ways when I first got the news about our baby I just remember obviously being devastated but then as I thought about the remainder of my pregnancy I did not think I'd be able to handle it I envisioned months of just miserable, miserableness, being sad and angry and frustrated and scared. And I did not foresee the remainder of my pregnancy being anything but just miserable. And the amazing thing is that it really hasn't been like that at all. Um, God has really gifted both Colton and I with an overwhelming sense of peace and joy. Um, when life has really given us so many reasons to be scared and so many reasons to be angry and miserable, um, God has just really flooded our hearts with peace and joy. Um, that is really inexplicable and really just hard to even for us to wrap our minds around. Um, and it's been really truly amazing despite everything that's been going on how we can enjoy this time that we have with our baby and um, it could very well be the only time we have with our baby and I'm, so I'm just really thankful that God has really come through for us that he is walking alongside us and that he's allowing us to feel this joy um, during this time so that if during this pregnancy if that's all the time we have with our baby it's not spent being miserable, but instead it's spent being joyful and thankful. And we're able to honestly say that I've enjoyed every moment of this pregnancy despite knowing the very real possibility of what could be the outcome. And so I know that there are many of you guys out there that have been praying for us on this journey, and I just want to say that we really super appreciate your prayers and a big reason why I was so willing to share our story with you today is because I want you to know that your prayers are being heard and they're being answered. God is so vividly present in our lives right now and I know that that is a huge, huge answer to prayer. So we really appreciate your continued prayers for us during this time and especially for our baby. Um, although we are at peace and feeling very joyful about things, um, we are, are still also very heartbroken and I, we still pray desperately for a miracle for our baby and we would really appreciate your prayers for that as well. And yeah, um, so that's kind of how God has been working in our lives during this time. Um, not a really fun story, but amazing nonetheless to just have God so clearly working in and through our lives right now. And I do just want to say, I know there's so much going on in the world right now with COVID-19 and there's so many of you that are probably feeling stressed and scared and anxious right now. And my prayer for you is that you can also experience God's gift of peace during this time and if you are somebody who is struggling with that right now like I would if you're comfortable I would love to hear from you and I would love to be able to pray specifically with you and for you um, that God can gift you and just cover you in his peace and his joy despite the craziness going on in the world right now thank you Natalie for sharing with us all today. Um, I'm always so encouraged whenever you share just your um, trust in the Lord. And uh, Brock and I have really enjoyed getting to know Colton and Allie better through our young adults life group. Um, we miss getting together with everyone, but um, it's my privilege to be able to pray for you today. So uh, please pray with me. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for your gift of peace 
and joy during this difficult time. God, you are our place of safety. You give us strength and help in times of trouble. We pray that you would continue to come alongside Natalie and Colton in this journey of their pregnancy. We pray that you would lay your healing hand on their baby, Lord. We know that you are the ultimate healer and you can do a miracle. Thank you that we can share prayers and praises with one another, especially now. Thank you for hearing our prayers and we just pray these things in your name. Amen. When the uncertain days of this pandemic began, I found myself struggling again with fear. Some of you may not know this about me, but for most of my life, I have battled fear and anxiety. Just ask my mom. When things come into my life that I cannot control, fear threatens to consume me. I personally wasn't concerned about getting sick, but rather that we in our small business would not be able to keep up with our financial responsibilities, that we would run out of money and not be able to employ our technicians, which would put them into financial hardship, that we wouldn't have enough to pay our bills, and that we would get so far behind that we couldn't find our way out. I was totally borrowing the trouble of tomorrow. It's amazing to me how I could so easily quote the verses in Matthew that say, do not worry about tomorrow, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. See how God provides for the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And yet, when this became a reality for me, it wasn't so easy to believe this with confidence. I went to work early each day and looked at the blank pages of our appointment book with much anxiety. As the season of Lent began, I was reading in the Gospel of John one day, and at the end of John chapter 14, Jesus promised that when he leaves, he will give us another advocate who will never leave us. Advocate, I found, means a combination of comfort and counsel. I began seeing the work of the advocate. Each day I have been able to shift my focus from looking ahead to the blank pages of tomorrow to absolutely enough for today. This gives a whole new meaning to the Lord's Prayer for me. Give us this day our daily bread. At first it was just a simple realization at the end of the day. Hmm, we had just enough work for today. And then I started saying it out loud as the days passed and the same was true every day. We had just enough work for today. And then I realized that it was the Holy Spirit teaching me and reminding me. I'm still tempted to look ahead to the blank pages and can still find myself on the edge of being consumed by the fear of tomorrow in many different parts of my life but I am also learning to rely on the Holy Spirit, my advocate, one day at a time. This is Jesus' promise. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. I will continue to claim this. one day at a time by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amy. I want to invite you to join me in prayer. And I want to encourage you even after we finish our prayer time today to be praying for businesses, for their owners, for their employees. And maybe you'll see advertisements uh, that come in the mail for different businesses. When you see those, you can pray for them. Or if you happen to be out driving somewhere and you see different businesses, some might look closed, some might look open, but I encourage you to pray for them. Uh, pray for the people who are managing those businesses, who own those businesses, and for those who would be working in those businesses, because all of our 
different uh, companies that are around us, all of them have been affected in one way or another by this current crisis we're living through. But I invite you now to join together with me as we pray uh, for some of the businesses and people that are around us facing challenges at this time. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do come to you in prayer and we thank you for never leaving us alone. We give you so much thanks for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us in every moment of every day, to comfort us and to guide us. We pray and ask that you would work in this health crisis, bringing healing and hope. We bring our anxieties and our fears to you and ask that you would grant us courage, that you would help us to face the challenges of today and to not worry about the unknowns of tomorrow. I want to pray for everyone like Lily and Randy who have businesses and workplaces that have been impacted by this crisis. You know, some companies and businesses are swamped with work and are feeling overwhelmed while others have had to reduce hours or maybe even close their doors. Give great wisdom to all of those who are operating businesses. Give them courage and creativity. Grant them rest and peace. We pray that you would carry their burdens. You know all of those people who have lost work or who are unemployed and who are facing financial concerns. And we do pray together and ask that you would provide for each one, uh, provide for the needs that people have and help us as a church to be able to walk well together, helping one another through this difficult time. Our hope is in you as the one who meets all of our needs our spiritual needs, our emotional needs, our mental needs, and our physical needs. Be glorified in us and through us as we continue to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you to everyone who has shared today. How encouraging it is to know that the power of Christ is at work. The verse that I want to share with you today is a special prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians and it's in chapter one, verse 17. It talks about the mighty power that God exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. It speaks of our hope, and it speaks of asking the Lord to open up our eyes so we would know him better. And this is how it goes. I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ to fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you would know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so you would know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for those of us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked in the present age and in the age to come. We serve a mighty Lord. We are so grateful that he is taking care of us and he is in charge and we look to him and we're going to close our class today with two special Bible verses. God bless you. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God. For the Lord God. Is the rock eternal. Is the rock eternal. Psalm 121 verses 7 and 8. The Lord keeps a long and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Thank you.